What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush, Let's Talk Jets Radio. Uh, this video has nothing to do with the Jets, the Panthers, NFL, or MMA. Uh, this is something completely off topic. So if this, you know, if this doesn't interest you, please just check out the rest of our channel and the rest of our videos. We appreciate all our subscribers and all our followers. Um, with the 20th anniversary of 9-11 um, coming up, it strikes up so many emotions for me. Um, as a person that, you know, worked in that area, across, right across the water, um, my office building, my office window overlooked the New York skyline. So I'll never forget this time and all the moments after it and the days and weeks after it. Um, it, it changed so many things for me. So, you know, when I was listening to Howard Stern, used to listen to him every day, and all of a sudden he, he says, hey, you know what, a, a plane hit the, you know, the, the Trade Center. You're like, ah, oh, maybe it's just one of those freak accidents and you don't really, you think of something. And you look out your window, I look out my window, and you could see like the, the smoke resonating from where it was. You're like, wow, that's crazy, you know, and you keep listening to Howard and you're, you're kind of like a little bit curious what's going on in the world, but, and then the second one hits and everything just changed. You know, you're, you're like, are, you know, your first instinct, are, are we under attack? Is New York under attack? Is New Jersey under attack? Is our world under attack? Like, what are we doing? Um, so, so many different emotions go on. Um, in my office complex, we were, we had 12 floors in our building and everybody started panicking. There's a couple people that actually fainted. A lot of people were upset. Very is very unnerving, very unsettling. Um, we we obviously had to evacuate pretty quickly because it, it words traveled pretty quickly. Like, listen, we don't know what's going on, but we all got to get out of here, um, which was just crazy. And all we did was we went home and we were all glued to our TVs. And I actually listened to Howard the whole time. He did a phenomenal job of covering it. But you, you sit and you're like, what is going on here? Like, this is unprecedented. You know, somebody at, at that time in my life, I never experienced anything like that. That near neck in my home, like my home area. It was, it was just wild. So, um, obviously we know what happened from there and, and it's just, you didn't, it was just, you didn't know what to do. Like you you became very, everybody's very patriotic. Obviously we love our country like that, but you're like, what's next? Is something else going to happen? And then, and then you see the images. And to this day, I, I really can't watch the videos. Like right now there's a lot of video montage of all things, it go, everybody looking back. And to me, it's very difficult to watch. I can't watch it. It's, it's upsetting. Um, I just can't, it's just too much for me to really take. So, you know, you, you think you, you watch the, the, um, all the people that were there and I had friends that worked there, but thankfully they all got out. Uh, but you see people jumping out of windows and, and as people are running out, the firemen and New York the police department are running in all these first responders are going in as people are going out. And obviously we, you know, what happened. And then the days after that, you know, you don't know how, you don't know what's next in our country. You don't know what to do. And, you know, we actually, I, we, a couple of my friends, we actually went there to try to figure out ways to give back and, and donate and help support. And it was wild because if you went to New York City, if you went to any areas, a lot of it was blocked off. There was tanks, there were soldiers. It was like, it was like, like these, the movies that you see is what New York City looked like. Like there was literally like soldiers walking around with, you know, with machine guns and tanks and areas are blocked off. There's dust and soot everywhere. It was just, like, you've never seen it before. I've been to Times Square. I mean, not Times Square. I've been to New York City so many times. And it was to see it like that and just empty. And, and just, so we went to get back because a lot of businesses there were open. But obviously, nobody's going to New York City out of fear because you don't want to go. You, you were scared to go on a subway. You were scared to go on a train. You were scared to do all these different things. And I was just like, I got to go back. I want to see firsthand what happened, you know. So we went there and it was just surreal and, you know, we tried, when you walk into any kind of restaurant in that area, they basically said, listen, most of us are under bomb scare right now. So you're entering here at your own risk. We have to tell you about this just so you know that you're here and, you know, this is, you understand what your environment you're dealing with. So we stayed. And then as we were there, soldiers and, and first responders from all across the country and all across the world would come in. And you could see like the wear, like just the, the strain and, and all the pain and suffering on their face. And obviously, we were trying to buy them food and buy them drinks and anything just to make and just it was just a, a, a surreal experience to see all these different people and how like just just like not defeated, but they were just drained. And it was just it was wild. It really was. I, I never thought I would ever experience something like that. And to see, you know, the ramifications of all of it. And um, it, it was it was very, very sad. And and from the days to come, like when I went to work. I took Route 3 to work, and you used to always see the, the smoldering of the smoke. Like, you would see it every day. It, it lasted for a long time. You'd see it. It was a constant reminder of it, and it was just crazy. It was just very, very sad. 
And over time, you, you hear, you find out people like, you know, the guy in the office next to me, he lost his best friend in the towers. Like everybody had a story they would share about it. And it was so damn sad, man. It, it was just, it, it was just weird, you know? And so then as, as time went on, you, you try to, everybody, you know, kind of unites and, and comes together. And then sports played a huge part in getting us all back. And the New York Jets and Giants, what the NFL tried to do is they wanted to play games that following week. And the Jets and Giant players were like, we're not doing it. Led by Vinny Testaverde and Wayne Corbett. Like, we're not doing this. Like, they were bigger things. They were donating their time, giving back. Um, you know, they were trying to just find ways to just help all these first responders. And what was even crazier was I was a season ticket holder with the Jets. And I tailgated with our, our big tailgate in 4-H was all first responders. It was um, a lot of New York cops, a lot of New York firemen. And they were like family to us. And when, they all, when this all went down... I was calling these guys like crazy. Hey, man, are you guys all right? And we didn't, we didn't really hear much from them. But obviously, they, at that point, for a little period there, the cell service sucked because you couldn't really, everybody's trying to call. You couldn't really do anything. So that sucked. You couldn't get a hold of anybody. So then, you know, that next week, we, we didn't see anybody. We were like, you, now you're starting to get worried. Like, man, like, how are these guys impacted? So the next Jet home game, we see all these guys. And the stories they shared and, and just the... You know, some of the pictures and the aftermath they shared with us was just mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. And it obviously was great to see them, but it was just, it kind of reiterated, like, you only see a certain part in the media. You only see certain stories. Like, obviously, we went, I went there to explore and see myself and try to understand. And another thing in New York City, when you went there, there was stations and stations of, um, like, built up, like, huts with pictures on them of missing people. Like, people looking for their family members. And you would see picture upon picture like walls of them saying, if you see this person, can you please help me? Like it, it's, I'm probably not doing enough justice, but like it was so wild. And even the first, rep first responders were saying, they're telling us the same thing. Like, listen, man, people are begging us. Please help me find them. Please don't give up. Please keep looking. Please, you know, it's just such a crazy time. And, and sports after the, you know, the first two weeks, sports had a huge impact of bringing us all back. From the Mike Piazza home run, to, you know, to the, um, the Yankees run the World Series to, you know, I actually went to the Jets Patriots game up in Foxborough and Joe Andrews, ran out with the with the American flag. And it was so everybody was just such a powerful meeting where Jets and Patriot fans were united, man. We're like, listen, we're we're all in this together. It's our country. And it was crazy. And even when the Jets came back, you know, and they played their first home game, a lot of powerful moments. And it, it's just, you know, over the time, it's, you know, it's something you can never forget. And that's why you see a lot of these things that people that dealt with it firsthand or lived by the area saw it and, and lived it. You glued your TV, glued your radio, and you were you had a lot of uncertainty. You know, you, you didn't you were you were scared to fly. And when you went, like I remember when I went to the Jets Patriots game, my parents were like, "Dude, don't go!" Like there was all kinds of like um, you have warnings going into the game, like this this a uh, like a bomb threat, a whatever threat. You any any large sporting event you went to is kind of like under. You're under all kinds of like caution and surveillance and everything else. Um, so it was a wild time. It was scary. And it, it's something that you'll never, ever, uh, something I'll never forget to the point where I can't even really watch it. I can't watch videos. I mean, I, I, I honor them. I respect them. I cannot thank first responders enough that sacrificed their lives. And, you know, even the, the thing that people don't remember or realize is that a lot, of, a lot of the first responders that actually made it through this tragedy are dealing with life and um, health effects now. They're, they're, have, they're struggling with other di different diseases now, whether it's cancer or, or any kind of like, you know, different, all kinds of different things. And they, they tend to be forgotten where it's like, listen, it was 20 years ago over time. It's like on to whatever the next thing is. And a lot of these first responders deal, these are, these are life-changing health issues they have. And we can, I can never, we can never forget them. Um, obviously we can never forget all the families that lost somebody. But uh, it's a time of remembrance. It's a time of, you know, just, it, it just and just be thankful for all those people that helped save the ones they could save and uh, the ones that are around to just even try to, you know, do this going forward. So I try to make a video about it. It's kind of long. I probably didn't make a lot of sense, but it's just a, it's such a different time. It's been 20 years. And I still can't believe it. And a lot of people, you know, are a little bit younger, don't realize how, how dramatic it was and how tragic it was to this area and the impact it had on our entire country. But especially around here, and uh, you know, it's something that you know a lot of companies that w that were around that area in that North Jersey area, or even New York City, a lot of companies went out of business because they were kind of uncertain they want to stay in that area based on can another a possible attack happen. There's a, there's a lot of trickle down from that as well too. So 
Um, that's it. Just some thoughts on it. Um, if you have something you want to share or something, but, uh, again, thank you all the first responders. Um, there's so much respect. They're, they're true heroes. They really are. Um, a lot of times we take them for granted until a crisis happens or a major tragedy, ha tragedy happens, but, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thoughts and prayers are with all the families that were impacted by this terrible tragedy. Cause, uh, it's unfathomable. And I know the pain is there for many, many people, including me. Have a good day.